Hello everybody and uh, welcome to this edition of BWB TV. My name is Michael Dunnock from the Informer team. I'm joined today by Tim Mullane, President and COO of Fujifilm Irvine Scientific. Uh, Tim's joined us today to talk about a few things, uh, the company, its businesses, how it's evolved since the Fujifilm acquisition. Um, and then also the impact of COVID-19 as well. So welcome to. Thanks, Michael. Nice to be here. So first question for you today, Tim, is can you tell us about Fujifilm Irvine Scientific? What are its businesses and how does it serve the biotech industry? Yeah, thanks. So first of all, again, thanks for having us and, and um, nice to meet you remotely. I'd like to be here in person, but COVID-19 COVID environment. Um, Fujifilm Orient Scientific uh, began in 1970. It's been serving the industry for about 50 years, and it began as a serum processing supplier. Uh, it began offering media in the 1980s, and it was one of the first media companies to offer ready-to-use media for in vitro fertilization clinics. That decision in the mid-1980s to do that began an evolution of the company toward becoming a full line cell culture media supplier, but we only focused on medical applications and life science applications. And we today we develop uh, innovative products for mammalian cell culture only. We don't offer any microbial cell culture. And we have two business units. We have a life science business unit, which serves the bioproduction, cell and gene therapy, drug discovery markets, and some basic research. The other business unit we have is a medical business unit which continues to be a leader in the in vitro fertilization market, but also has some products which supports genetic diagnostics. So from a company standpoint, it was really that expertise in IVF back in the 1980s, which led us to pursue things like cell and gene therapy applications. You know, about, well, it's been almost nine years ago we began that business. And our long expertise in embryo cell culture, and, and also those products are class two, class three medical devices. So that gives us a very high level of regulatory expertise, ideally positioned us to move into that cell and gene therapy applications. Um, the other thing that's important to understand about our business is we began in the, in the bioprocessing business back in the early 1990s. So we've got a long history of providing different medias for different applications, from growing cells to freezing cells, uh, from a whole host of, of, of different applications. So to support the markets, we offer today a diverse portfolio of advanced cell culture solutions, including media products. We also offer services to our customers to help them optimize their, their products and some technologies that allow us to, to meet the evolving needs of all those industries I mentioned. Uh, we're, we're also important thing to understand is we're completely vertically integrated, Michael. So we, we do everything from research and development to manufacturing to supply chain logistics to meet customers' needs in those very different markets. And all this is underpinned by uh, CGMP and ISO certification, which allows us to offer very high quality products and a reliable supply globally. Um, a couple other things about the business, we support a very large number of therapies globally in the bioproduction space. And we also supply products for medical clinics. So, so we're expanding our operations around the globe currently. Uh, both from manufacturing and logistics to support uh, both the EU, uh, Far East, uh, Middle East, North Africa, and as well as Asia Pac. And so that's kind of where the business is today and how we support it. Thank you for the overview. Um, so, Tim, what are the keys to successful cell culture media organization? You know, how do you uh, address them or cell culture media optimization, I should say? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's essentially what we do, and I believe the first thing is always your people. So we, we, we work really hard to try and bring people in that first of all approach cell culture with a passion, but also have a, a good expertise. Um, you know, this is an area we believe we've excelled in. Again, you, you, from a standpoint of what we're offering, we're offering a very diverse number of cell culture applications, everything from embryo culture, which is just a few days of growing cells. To bioproduction, which can be as you know, if it's a perfusion process, it can last 30 days. So the, our scientists are dealing with incredibly diverse customer applications in life sciences and also medical applications. And so the 
important things about cell culture optimization is cell culture is dependent on three essential elements. First of all is the cells, the cells themselves. The second is the process and how you're growing. And I mentioned the very different processes we're dealing with from embryo culture and stem cells to bioproduction. And then the third thing is the cell culture media itself. And significant time and effort is invested in developing our own suite of products, but also customers to come to us with their cell culture media from time to time and ask us to help them optimize that. So it's important that along with the cell line and the process parameters, how you're growing those cells, that you find the optimum media for what, what, what you're going to do with those cells in the end, end user application. Um, cell culture media significantly affects cell culture growth, the viability of cell lines, the, especially in bioproduction. And it can even Im impact things like protein quality and also the cell quality. So cell quality is very important for, you know, obviously if you're using cells as a therapy. Um, give you a simple example is an, an L, something that we call, it's called in the industry trace elements. Trace elements are used in media and they're things like copper and manganese, and they serve as enzyme cofactors. And they can directly impact the, the profile, the glycosylation profile of a biologic. So understanding the level of trace elements that are going into a media and also you know, what components that you're using as a raw material can bring in trace elements into the media is really critical to helping a customer develop their own processes, their own, their own cell culture media. So we, we do a lot of work on that and our people work with the end users to understand how they're going to grow their cells and how they're going to be optimizing those cells. Um, the other thing that's important is a, a media is optimized for the type of process that you're using. So if you're doing a fed batch application in bioproduction, which is a growth media plus a feed is different yeah. from a perfusion media. And so understand that's really critical. Uh, our team takes the time to use tools such as design of, of experiment and multi-factor data analysis, which allows for what we call rational media design. Um, the last thing is the other important element of, of the media development is what kind of form you want it in. Does the customer want that in a dry powder or do they want it in liquid? So yeah. if it's dry powder, the, the understanding of, of ease of hydration and solubility whether you know whether or not you're going to be wanting to do pH manipulation or heat manipulation of that is really critical. So all that is a long-winded answer to say cell culture is unique and it's different, and it, it's important for our people to understand you know how to how to work with all of those to develop media that that are optimized for the end user application. Wonderful, thank you. And. Uh... I guess the, the question on everyone's lips, and I'm sure you've you've been asked this a few times in the last 18 months, um, what impact has uh, the COVID-19 pandemic had on your businesses? Yeah, it's it's like everybody else. It's been uh, it's been a blessing and a curse. So the you know, the um, the whole life science industry has, has been profoundly impacted for the for the foreseeable future by COVID-19. Um, on one hand, it's driven huge demand and that's been great for for our business for supplying customers, but it also negatively impacted uh, other parts of our business, such as medical applications, where clinics and personnel in those markets were repurposed and directed to support mm -hmm. COVID patients. So, you know, we've, we've had to deal with both of those, both those extremes. And, you know, one of the things that's been incredibly rewarding for us is we're supporting a large number of therapies that are that are being directly used to fight COVID-19 around the globe. So that's you know that, that makes it rewarding to come into work. It's something that we can use to inspire our personnel to, in this very challenging work environment. We were talking before we came on the air about the new the new hybrid work environment. So you know we have both essential workers and what we call non-essential workers. And those essential workers have been able to come in, and we've been able to stay in continuous operation uh, throughout the entire pandemic which has been a, a true testament to our to our management team and our personnel. Um, the one big thing that's been a huge challenge for everyone is the supply chain impact of COVID-19. We're constantly dealing with trying to not only get materials in through this impact of supply chain, but also get product to our customers. You know, the customers are, are, are struggling to get product because of the impacted uh, flights and, and delivery of products. So it's been a, it's been both a blessing and a curse, but we're, we're persevering. Good stuff. Good to hear. And, um, you know, we've mentioned in the summary at the uh, at the beginning is um, 
it's been more than three years since the company joined the Fujifilm uh, group overall. What positive impacts have you seen having Fujifilm as your parent company? Yeah, well, first of all, it was a profoundly positive impact for our organization uh, because Fujifilm, first of all, brought a very diverse set of, of what I call we call innate technologies that, that were available to them. They're also focused in the medical and life science industries. And since the, the, we joined, Fujifilm took the further step to create what, what we now report into, which is the life science business division. So we're sharing all of the expertise and that innate technology across the life science business division and medical applications. And, and we also have access to a very large amount of, of additional scientific capability through those other Fujifilm, Fujifilm companies. They've also provided incredible financial support. So, you know, we, we announced earlier the expansion of our manufacturing operations. We're continuing to, to expand those operations. Those were in Europe, but we're continuing to expand those operations in other parts of the world as well. So, you know, those have been the, the most profound impact. And then the last thing I'd say is the culture and the philosophy of the organization. Uh, it built on what we thought was already a very positive culture, but we, you know, we have a we have what we call seven pillars of corporate culture here at the company, and the Fujifilm way was rapidly adopted by our by our personnel to help us continue to advance and accelerate uh, under the Fujifilm leadership. Fantastic. And uh, our final question for uh, for you today, Tim: What is the strategic direction for Fujifilm Irvine Scientific? Yeah, so we, we intend to continue to be a leader in, in the cell culture market, but we're going to move into adjacent areas and adjacent markets. We are moving into things such as single-use technology. We're, we're working to expand our, our capabilities as the market's expanding in things like perfusion and intensified bioprocessing. And we're also looking at how do we enhance our medical applications to support those the existing medical applications, but move beyond that in the in the space that we're currently supporting both from from embryo culture all the way through stem cell and cell gene therapies so we're, we're looking at how do we fill in the, in the adjacent areas around those those core those core capabilities and we're going to continue to focus on cell culture we're building a cell culture center of excellence uh, that that we will will be announcing the expansion of that in imminently and you know we're looking forward to continuing to grow faster than the market. We've been able to grow faster than market growth for over a decade, and that's led to pretty significant market share capture. And that's that's our continued goal going into the next decade as well. Lovely, Tim. That was uh, that was really really good. Thank you so much for giving up your time. It's fantastic uh, interview today. Hopefully you can uh, join us again and um, yeah, look forward to maybe seeing you in person at some of the, the conferences we're coming up to. Me as well, Michael. I hope we can get out of the go, going to in person meetings very soon and I look forward to seeing you in the future. And again, thanks so much for having us on. No problem. Thank you.